other listing that you might have, or you could show them within the neighborhood. Uh -huh. um, they're not going to sign it by our agency because they're right there. They want to see it now. Okay. to give them, here's the price, here's this, but when you're giving them value advice, such as days on market information, oh, they just, you know, they originally listed at this, or oh, I know the seller is moving because, you know, uh, they got a job transfer. It's, it's those types of things that generally you're violating when you don't have a buyer agency signed up front. Mm -hmm. So, what's another objection that maybe sometimes you hear, or a question that a buyer just may generally ask you when you present the buyer agency agreement? I don't want to sign anything. I'm not ready yet. Okay.
because I'm going to demonstrate value advice to them during the consultation. Typically, a bad transaction or the lack of getting a buyer agency signed is just a bad presentation. The natural progression to a great presentation is you get the deal signed. You get what you, you know, the buyer gets what they want by hiring an agent or they get what they want by completing a sale um, or your seller gets what they want because they list the house with you. And I find that most agents just don't have a really good consultation. Most agents' consultations out there are, you know, great, it's nice to meet you, sign my agency. Why would I do that? If you don't demonstrate value, so you know what, I, I, you want to look at homes, that's great. I would love to meet with you for just maybe, you know, 45 to 60 minutes, talk to you about the home buying process, and see how I can best assist you in, you know, your goal to buy a home. When can we meet? Would that be tomorrow or Friday? And then at the consultation, then I'm going to do that heavy lifting of, you know, now that I'm demonstrating to you that I know what I'm doing, here's how I can help you, here's some pieces of advice with, um, you know, getting a loan and how the home buying process works, then switch the table, let them talk to me about what they're looking for, and then set up a search for them on MLS, show them all the fancy tools, then of course all that's left is, hey, you know, so to make it official, you well, you know, would you like to uh, hire me to be your agent? And most people at that point, once you've spent an hour or maybe two, because maybe you have pop tarted with them before, or you met them at an open house somewhere, had a little bit of a dialogue, are probably going to be comfortable enough to hire you as long as you haven't screwed it up. Now, that's mostly you're talking about maybe first time home buyers are coming to you. Even with a second time home buyer, you can't assume that they already know what they're doing. Um, so if I'm at an open house and I meet a buyer, like, okay, I was at an open house a couple weeks ago and I met a buyer that came in and, you know, they own an existing home and really, what's that? I need to probably talk about them selling prior to the buying appointment anyway. So even with somebody that's seasoned, it's maybe not exactly a buyer's presentation, but even if that seller wanted to just look at some other homes before they made the decision to sell because they just wanted to test the market, I think that's fine, and I can make the decision to show them a couple of homes unrepresented in the hopes that in doing so, I'll cement the relationship and create a bond. If I do that, then, of course, when I present the paperwork to list the home or, or help them buy the next one, I, I've, already, I've already got it done. To me, the buyer agency is just about relationship bonding. It's really not about legally, I can't represent you unless I have this signed. It's a trust relationship. So you've got to build that trust with the client. And so sometimes that does take getting out there with them, meeting them for coffee, or doing something prior to just showing a bunch of homes. What I don't want you guys to do is just go out with you know Bob and Mary that showed up at your open house and show them 20 houses and then talk about which one's better and what would the house be worth if, if they were to buy it and fix it up and resell it. All of those things that are value pieces, if you give that away without having the agency sign, then why on earth would they need to sign your agency? There's no reason to. So you have to hold some of those services back. But I can do that in showing them a couple of houses to you know either pop tart or test the relationship then reel them back in and say, you know, I'd really like to sit down with you. I know you guys have, even if, you know, I know you guys have bought a home before, but it is my policy that I would really like to sit down with my buyers and just make sure, number one, that you just get a brush up on what's changed with getting mortgage and looking at homes in today's market and kind of what the market conditions are out there and what the average list price to sales price ratio is. Wouldn't that be helpful to you? Those? Okay. Um, and then I would love to really get in depth about the house that you're looking for. Because if you've already bought a home before and you're going to buy the next one, you probably have a pretty big list of criteria that you're really looking for, aren't you? Yes, great. That's why we should meet when we'd be good. So I think that answers mostly about being pushy. I think it's about not being pushy. It's that you're just not doing it right. You should absolutely get those signed. I have a very high percentage. If I get somebody in the office, it's like 94, 95%. I'm going to come away with that listing or that buyer agency signed only because I have a process, I have instructions, I have education, all built into that buyer's consultation. 
and the clients that I rush that process with because I assume that they know what they're doing or there was just not time to do a full consultation, those are always my hardest to close transactions because I haven't set the table good enough during that first consultation so that they understand what's about to happen to them and what the expectations are and what the process is. So don't worry about being pushy. But if that is your first question, yeah, you're probably going to come across as, as pushy. So Lois, welcome to the open house. Now before I can show you anything else, I have to have this buyer in designer. I just can't work with you. No, that's not going to work. That's not going to get your buyer agency signed. <laughs> okay. So let's talk one more thing about that. So those of you that have listened to the other classes know or been to the other classes know that on that Missouri Broker Disclosure form, that Holdy form, on the very front, there is a, there's two lines that state that a buyer, if they choose to have representation, they have to sign a written agreement and but if they choose not to be represented, then the agent helping them may be working for the other party in the transaction. So, of course, it is our duty as agents to always have that brochure available at first available moment. So how I'm going to handle that is if I'm pop-tarting and it's my listing, I'm going to hand them that brochure and I'm going to have, you know, the seller's disclosure and the property flyer, just any general information. And I'm going to greet the client at the door and say, great, you know, hi, my name is Carolyn. I'm the listing agent of this particular property. Here's some information about how agents work. And by the way, here's a property flyer and some information about the neighborhood. Are you guys ready to go in? Right? I'm not making a big deal about the brochure. I'm not shutting the agency in their face. But I am doing my duty to give them the brochure and inform them that I represent the seller. Correct? Okay. Now, of course, I would love to sell my own listing. But 99 times out of 100, when I show my own listing, the buyer doesn't actually buy it. it is, you, it's more, like very rare that the buyer will actually go, let's write this up. It just doesn't happen. Because typically, that's the first house that the buyers have seen, usually. They're, they got their guts up and they called because there was something about that house that they really liked, but when they get in there, it doesn't actually match their expectation. So you're gonna to have to let those buyers off the hook a little bit that they may not like the house. Of course you wanna represent your seller and try to get the house sold, but you know what buying signals are. And if the buyers are kind of shutting down, you can hear them murmuring about, you know, they don't like something or they're a little disappointed, then I'm simply going to say, at the, you know, when they get back to the front door area, um, I'm going to say, so, you know, on a scale of 1 to 10, what did you guys think about the house? And, and you have my permission to be completely honest. And, oh, by the way, you each get a score. Okay? So if there's two of them. So usually that's going to be a score of 7 or under. Now, if they really like the house, it's like 8, 9, or 10, then I'm going to take this a different direction. But if I get, well, it's a 4 or 5, I'm going to simply say, so this is the house for you, is it? And when you say it like that, it... You can literally see the stress release, and they're like, yeah, it's not. And they just didn't want to hurt your feelings because they know that you represent the seller. Great. So once I've got them there, then it's just a matter of, great, well, let's find you the house that is. Has anybody offered to help you, you know, find the right house for you? Probably the answer is no. Then you're going to invite them back for the consultation, and then it's an easy, it's easy. Once you have them in the room with the consultation, you're showing them your value, then they'll sign the agency. Okay, scenario two, it's not my listing. So I'm at the open house and I show them the house next door or I just get a random internet lead or other advertising that I might do. Um, I'm going to bring the same stuff, but on that brochure, I'm going to highlight the part that says you have to be uh, in a written agreement to have representation and if not, the, other, the agent working with you may be working with the other party. And I highlight it when I hand it to them. And I just say, hi, my name is Carolyn. I'm with Keller Williams, blah, 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 let's go see the house. Right? Because I have no relationship to the house itself. And nine times out of ten, they're going to look at that brochure and they're going to read that. And they're going to be like, what is this? And that's your opening. You know, to say, oh, yeah, in the state of Missouri, this is how it works. Um, you know, if you don't sign with an agent, then, you know, you can have people open doors for you. But they technically, you know, kind of work for the seller unless... You know, you want them to work for you and in your best interest. 
Um, has anybody talked to you about that before? And then they'll probably say no, and say, great, we should meet. Let's go to my office, you know, look at the house and whatever. And you can still do the same script of one to 10, and is this the house for you? No, it's probably not, or yes it is, okay, great. And then, you know, plan accordingly. Um, but that's just two ways to kind of help you do your job, which probably the majority of agents out there aren't even doing that. They're not even handing them the brochure and informing them of, of who they are representing if they are. And that will make an impression on them if you just do your job. Okay, does that help? Okay, very good. All right, so open house visitors, same thing. You know, I'm just, I, I'm totally fine with let's just go look at the house and then I'm gonna do the same thing. And I always have the fully forms at my open houses but not highlighted because I'm usually the representing the seller. Um, if I were in another agent's open home for whatever reason, I'm hosting an open house, I would have that highlighted. And, um, and then I think it's fine to take them down and show them a house or two in the neighborhood. In fact, I'm, that open house, I'm gonna have a list of all of the available homes there printed off separately or on the back of the flyer so that in case this house may, misses the mark, I've got a list handy of every single home on the market and, um, and this is just a fraction. You know, if we meet in my office, I can actually show you every single home that's listed. So, and then from there, rope them into the consultation. All right, I'm not ready and I don't want to sign. Okay, that is typically just a symbol of you have not sold them yet on yourself. There is something wrong with the relationship. So where, I, where I'm going to go right away is say, great, I totally respect that. So what is causing you to not feel like you are ready to sign? Usually they have a relative that just <coughs> got their license. And they okay. don't want to sign with you, but they don't want to tell you that because the new agents too green to know what they're doing and they want to see what they can find out. Okay, so the response to that was that we, they have a relative, it's a brand new agent, or friend. or friend, that is a brand new agent that they want to use instead. So when you get this objection, are you in the consultation or are you just doing a Pop-Tart? Pop yeah, in a Pop-Tart, okay. So in that situation, my comeback to that would be great. So do you really wanna trust the largest investment of your life to this point? on a agent that doesn't have any experience. And for those of you that don't have experience, you're all having a freak out right now, and it doesn't matter. You're gonna say that same script anyway, I don't care, because by you being in this training, you are already getting more experience than the average agent that's with possibly another brokerage. Those of you that are coming from other brokerages, that might be correct, maybe, possibly, okay. So rest on your experience. You're not saying you are not experienced, you're just saying are you wanna trust that with somebody who's less experienced? You can say it that way. That would be a, that would be a way you could do it. Another workaround would be if you're willing, you could offer to pay that agent a referral fee and offer to work for the client. So you know what, Linda, I could certainly, I mean, I don't know if you wanna trust a brand new agent with the largest, you know, purchase that you're going to make. Um, but if you're interested in working with me and you want to be loyal to your friend, um, what if we paid her referral fee? And I'd be happy to do that. That way, she gets compensated for your relationship, but she's not having to do the heavy lifting and of giving you that value advice that I know you so much need. Um, how does that feel to you? That, that sounds fair, but she really needs the money. I'm just trying to help her. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And you know what, I would love to meet her and maybe have her come into our brokerage because maybe we could help her with her training. So the next time you're ready to move, she, you could be your agent of choice. That's a good idea. Okay, great. So you, you just made that a happy story. Okay, so that, that's one way that you can handle it. Okay, what, might not, what may be another objection that I'm not ready, um, I don't want to sign. So if I say, so what's making you not want to sign with me today? What are you thinking? What, what might be something you think somebody would say? Someone's already touched on You're way too young. Yeah. You're way too young. But not me. Not me, Chris. I am young. I mean, you're probably too young. But most of the time, like when they make 
their, their objections are usually not, I mean, when you're talking to them about signing, you know, you're, you know, you're selling yourself and your skills and your abilities and all that. But most of the time, their objections <coughs> don't have anything to do with that. You know, it's mostly like, like, I just don't like to sign anything right now. I'd rather look at three houses before I sign or something like that. It's, most of the time, it's not like, well, you know, you look like you're too young to be selling real estate or, or <laughs> you know, it's, it's usually not an objection like that. It's usually, <clears throat> or I want you to show me some houses first so that I can get to know you better. I mean, it's usually never anything like that. I mean, I could, I could deal with that. I could, you know, if they said, well, let me, you know, show me what you can do. Show me a couple of houses first and let me, then I could deal with that. But it's usually nothing like that. It's usually something like those. Right. So what she, what Lois is saying, so for the camera, is oh. <laughs> so that uh, the objections tend not to be that specific as I'm too young or I don't have enough experience, but more just that the, the buyer just wants to put you off and just say, I'm just not ready, I just want you to show me houses. That it's more of a broad um, rejection mm -hmm. as opposed to a specific thing, and I would agree with that. Linda's shaking her head to that as well. Now, that may be going in your head, you know, that, that may be cycling in, but what, what you have that as an experienced agent doesn't, in case that does come up, is that yes, I am younger in the business, but that means I have more time to spend with you than um, the crazy girl that teaches all the classes in the office that has no time for her clients. Right, that's not true, but you know, but that's what you're gonna say. That's how you're gonna combat that lack of experience, no matter whether it's age or how long you've been in the business, is you're just gonna flip the script and say, right, but an experienced agent has so many clients, it's so hard for them. I don't have that many clients, so you're gonna have my 100% complete attention. Isn't that great? And you know, and that's and that's how you're going to combat that. And most people, if they know they're going to get a higher level of service out of you, and you know what's even better is that at Keller Williams we have business coaches, and so we're so you know, rest assured, you don't just have hire me. You hire me and everyone that gives me advice and teaches me lessons in this office. And I've got you know seven people on an agent leadership council that will help me at any moment not to mention the years and years of experience that are built up in my office of people that I have relationships with not to mention my mentor my coach my you know team leader you can rely on all of these people that you know it's not, not going to be you making decisions you're actually getting guidance and coaching when you're part of our brokerage okay. all right now for the buyer that just isn't yet committed um, so Lois, let's just play that out. Let's see where this goes. Okay. So Lois, I hear you saying you're just you're kind of not ready to be committed to somebody. Is is that right? To, yes. You're that's just right. scared to sign. Okay. So what's causing that fear? Well, I wouldn't exactly call it fear. I'm just um, uh, a high D personality, and I just want. <laughs> yeah, I do the just. I'm just a high D personality, and I just want to see what you can do before I sign your agreement. Okay, great. Well, I know I can sell you a house. So why don't you just sign the agreement? Because if you're high D, right? If you're high D, I'm just gonna go in there and get it done because you just don't want to hear all my fluff. Okay? You just don't want to hear it. Okay. All right. So so there's some hesitancy. You're just not sold on me. Great. So Lois, here's what we're gonna do. Okay? I was just in the situation a couple of years ago. Here's what we're gonna do. I know you had a bad experience with this other agent, and I know that makes you a little leery because everybody's just been after you, trying to get you to sign everything, and you just feel pressured, and you don't know if you're gonna like me or not. I get that. So here's what's going to happen. We're going to look at the three houses you want to look at. And when we go, I don't want you to ask me any questions about how long has it been on the market, what do I think it's really worth, how low do you think we can get it, what's the average sales price in the neighborhood. I don't want to hear any of those questions. I will go open the doors and give you any information that I can. And then at the end of that, the next time that we meet, I will be asking you to sign my agreement. Does that sound fair? That sounds good. Perfect. Great. So now we're going to go to the house. This actually happened to me. We get to the door of the first one. Wow. This is kind of a good, this looks like this could be a great house. If we fix this up, how much would it be worth? And I just looked at him and I go, <laughs> kind of, you know, I was cute about it. I wasn't just like some jerk. But, you know, I was like, I don't know. You know, and he's like, can I, he knew my game. You know, he was like, okay, I get it. He's like, all right, all right, all right. We get to the second house. Well, this one's a pretty good investment too. He was an investor looking at townhomes. And he said, so how long has this one been on the market? Do you think they'll come down again in price? And I just looked at him and I'm like, I don't know. 
And then he went to the third house and he asked me some other question. I don't remember what it was, but it was one of the ones I told him not to ask me. And I, and I just looked at him and I go, Darren. <laughs> and he goes, all right, all right, all right, I'll sign it. <laughs> right? I mean, he just, you just have to set a standard. And when he saw that I was not going to be pushed off of my standard, it cemented in his mind that I was somebody to be reckoned with that I was good for my word, that I was going to be a good agent for him, and because he knew enough, and he had been mistreated by somebody else, to where he knew the difference when he saw it. What he wouldn't have respected is if I had just rattled off and violated the rules that I just told him were my ceiling. You know, because once you violate that, you know, to gain that buyer trust, what you're doing is exactly the opposite. You're telling it because you're doing exactly what you told him you wouldn't do. So then why on earth would they trust you with making a deal for them if you already have reneged on what you said your standard was? Okay, so don't be afraid to hold to that standard. It really is okay. And it really is okay to go show somebody a test run of houses. Just what I would not have done is if, if we hadn't, if that hadn't happened, is the next time that we got together, I'm putting that right in front of them again. And I'm going to say, I'm going to ask you to sign this this time. I would really like to work for you the only way I know how, which is to give you full service. And I just don't know how to do half my job. So will you please sign agency? And you can break up with me if, if we you know, get into this and you really decide you don't like it. You know, we get into a place, I don't want to work with you, you don't want to work with me, it's fine, we'll tear it up. You know, our broker will support you in that. If you ever get in a relationship with somebody and you're like, ugh, this has to end, he will allow you to tear up the agreement. And what is the amount of time that you make your um, buyer agency agreements for? Six to nine months on average. Because sometimes I, I you know, there are uh, objections about the time frame, too. You know, they may object to six months. And you so for that transaction. I, I sold a lot of houses because I would do it for that transaction. Yeah, I mean, you can do that just for the house address. Yeah. Yes, yes you, can, address. you can sign. So the question was, you know, can you sign the buyer agency just for the one particular house that you're going to show them? And yes, you can. And that will free the buyer up to go, you know, call Linda or call somebody else and say, hey, you know, will you show me this other house, right? So you could do that, and that does help you. Um, I actually not needed to use that. I, I, I've done, I, I'm more comfortable probably just going ahead and doing a test run and then not doing it again. You know, just holding my standard that we are going to sign this or at least have an understanding. Well, I sold them the house. Yeah, they you want, can. They don't want you to do can. a three-month one because they said, well, you know, I, I got agents everywhere, and I'm like, okay, then we'll just do it for this transaction, but he, then he came back and bought more from me. So. Sure, so because you, you built the relationship. Like, you just changed the date. I didn't care. I'm... Yeah, I thought out another one. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yes, you fill out another one. Yeah. yeah. Because technically, when you sign a buyer agency and that buyer actually closes a piece of property, technically that agency is dissolved. Um, so for every, uh, you know, for every investor I have that would, might come back and buy three to four houses from me over a year, I have to do a new buyer agency in each one. So, um, okay. Uh, and the question, see, did we get the last question? Yes, about yes. that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, uh, so I'm not ready, I don't want to sign. Typically it's just going to be also just you haven't built this relationship up with them and if you just ask them why they don't want to sign, you'll get to the crux of the problem. There may be something in the buyer agency itself that scares them and so maybe if you just kind of like, well, I know you're not ready to sign, but why don't we just review the contract or I try not to call it a contract in front of the buyer, it's usually an agreement um, and just see if there's anything in here that you're not really objecting to. Because what you're not going to find in the buyer agency agreement is a promise that they have to buy a house and that they owe you anything unless you write it in. So if, if there's not an upfront fee to work with you, they don't owe you anything. So Mr. Buyer, I know you might be worried about signing it, but to be honest with you, this doesn't commit you to working for me with me for the rest of your life. It doesn't force you to pay me any money. Um, and it does not force you to actually buy a house. It, all it does is allow me to represent you in your best interest and guide you in this home process, uh, purchase process. It, it really, is there anything in there that it doesn't sound right to you? Yes, no? Okay, so then let's go ahead and, and sign it. And then, you know, if we get together and you decide you don't like me, you can break up with me, it's okay. 
you know it, right? <laughs> so sometimes just being, I, I do play to the little bit of silly humor side of seriousness. So that, because it breaks it up. And if I can make people kind of laugh or smile, um, it makes me human. It makes me not this kind of crazy real estate warrior. Just It just makes me want to help them and just seem a little bit likable. And you have to mirror and match your client, though, because if, you're, if you've got somebody that's highly driven and you crack what you think is a great joke and they just go, <laughs> <laughs> stop it. <laughs> like, you have to put your mirror on and identify that that person did not respond to the charm. And so stop, stop it because he's thinking that you're silly. You know, he's thinking, so you've got to come down to their level and get more serious, which is why when she was like, I'm the high D, I just went, okay, let's just sign the contract. Right? You, just, you got to cut all the stuff, the fat off, and then just get to what's important to the client. Okay. All right, can I look at for sale by owner homes? Well, absolutely, of course you can. Signing my buyer agency agreement does not prevent you from looking at any home that isn't in the MLS. In fact, I can help you with all of them. Isn't that great? So here's how it works. And so then I would explain that you know, if you drive by a for sale by owner, um, or I may be working behind the scenes to find homes that fit your needs that aren't in the MLS. If we find one of those, your first job as the buyer is to let me know immediately by stopping the car and writing down the address, phone number, any information off the sign. Because it may be that I'll call the for sale by owner client and the house is overpriced or it doesn't quite meet your criteria and I may be able to help you with that. Secondly, I will go ahead of our appointment and just ensure that the for sale by owner or non-represented client is completely comfortable with paying the commission. And because I don't want to ever have to charge you for my services. And most unrepresented sellers will absolutely pay my commission because they're just looking to save the bigger number. So that means that they'd be happy to pay, you know, typically I would charge a for sale by owner 4% if I bring the buyer. And you can charge whatever you want. Um, my business partner got 6% on one, like where she brought the buyer in and got them to sign a 6% right to show agreement. So what you're going to do is get a right to show agreement signed by the, by the for sale by owner and represented buyer up front and then have them sign that that they agree to whatever compensation and then you, can, you, know, you come in and you show that client the house and see if it works out. Yes? Um, so I, I have uh, some buyers that I'm showing houses to and they found a for sale by owner house and they want to look at. So I called the for sale by owner and asked her and she and, and I asked her would she be willing to pay a commission. And she said, absolutely not. If they want the house, they're going to have to pay the commission. The buyer's going to have to pay the commission. So then, you know, and the buyer says, well, we won't, really want to look at it. We'll just move on to other houses. There you go. So the point I was asked that many times if a for sale by owner refuses to pay the commission, that then you would have to go back and tell your buyer, yeah, the, you know, the seller will sell you the house, but the commission would have to be, you know, put into the purchase price. That means you would be paying for it. I don't really want you to have to do that. How do you feel about that? And you give the buyer the choice. And a lot of times the buyer will just go, well, screw that, because we can look at 50 other houses yeah. that, you know, we don't even have to worry about that, and they're not overpriced, which is true with most for sale by owners. You know, there is a phenomenon that happens that, you know, if this is market value, <clears throat> what all the other houses are selling for, approximately, don't you find that the majority of for sale by owners do tend to really value their homes. They really think they've got the best carpet and the best landscaping and they just spent $15,000 to put in a cool fire pit, <laughs> you know, whatever it is. And so whatever that money that they've spent in the last couple of years, if, if, and, I, and it doesn't matter what the number is, but let's just say it's 200,000 is market value. Well, they're automatically gonna add that in. Because if all the other houses down the street you know, sold for about that much, then they're just going to add on what they think is more awesome about their particular house. Secondly, um, they also may not get the whole story from their neighbors, because that's generally how they're pricing their homes. And neighbors may not want to tell the truth about how much they actually paid in closing costs or that they gave a discount because they know the other neighbors are going to be mad for them underselling their home. And so if for sale by owner doesn't have good market data, they also may be working off an inflated price point of 210 
and then they're going to add on on top of that and get this price up to 2.5. So what on earth, why would a buyer even want to buy a personal buyer house? What would be the main reason? Because they like it, but, but why would but why would the average buyer just drive out there looking for for sale by owners? They get a better deal. Better deal. Mm -hmm. So if this is market and they know that they don't have to pay a salesperson, would they not be expecting to see this about six to ten percent cheaper than market? Mm -hmm. So the buyer is looking somewhere here for this value of a home to be a for sale by owner at this price. So buyers thinking here. And you know what, they're just not really impressed with the $15,000 fire pit. They don't really care about that, so they're not even giving that credence, right? So maybe they're even thinking a little lower. And the sellers tend to be up here. Well, look at the gap. You've got a $200,000 neighborhood, but the seller may be at two twenty-five, dollars and the buyer may be at one eighty dollars to $45,000 apart. Because there's no commission. Right, and, there, and there's, right, because they want to keep the commission for themselves, and the buyer wants it dealt out of the house. And they're happy to pay you the three or four percent to put it back in. They don't really mind if, even if that had to happen and that was the house they really liked, they're still picking up a house for 190. That should be 200, right? So you can you can still convince the buyer this is a good deal. If you, if you deal out the commission, we're only adding part in. You're still beating the market. So that's easy. It's an easy sell to the buyer. Uh, but typically, this just doesn't work out. The, once, the, once the buyer finds out what the price is, 225, well, we can look at five other houses for 200 in that neighborhood. What, why would we do that? And that's generally how it goes down. Now, occasionally, you'll get a reasonable for sell by owner that will, you know, that, that understands what they're doing, and, and they can sell their own home. There, there are people that do. Um, but in this situation, this is generally what happens. And if I have a buyer that's highly interested in for sell by owners or just very questioning me about it, I will actually draw this on a piece of paper and say, you know, here's what happens with most for sale by owners that we're going to find. And then by the time you bond with them, you send them all the listings in the MLS, you start looking at houses, they forget all about chasing the for sale by owners. <laughs> they, do. they just do. I mean, I early in my career, I did lose a buyer to a for sale by owner that didn't do what I said and didn't call me. They called the seller, looked at it themselves, and then bought the house without me. Called to tell me they were going to do it, yes. Uh, anyway, that was my mistake. The, but that's how these scripts get, get learned and internalized, is when you have failure, you're gonna learn from it and get stronger. So, you know, I had to go out and find a for sale by owner. So, okay, how do I to prep a buyer for a for sale by owner and not lose them? Okay, th well, this is one way. Is that just to screw up what their expectations are? Because this, it's not that I'm screwing it up, I'm just telling them, look, this is what kind of really happens. And we're gonna be able to see all these other houses that aren't overpriced. Um, and why on earth would you want to buy something without having assistance? Because I do this every day. And you know, do you really want to base your biggest investment off of you know what a for sale by owner and you decide is right? How do you know you're getting full disclosures? How do you know the title is really clear? How do you know that you didn't buy the property without encroachments or infringements? Do you even know what that means? And you know what happens if the seller owes more money than you're offering, and nobody knows that and it screws up your deal, think of all the time and energy you're gonna waste. You're, you're gonna be begging for someone <laughs> to uh, <coughs> do the deal for you at 6% once you get in a bad spot. So, you know, you don't wanna do that, do you? Okay, now that we've had a little bit of dialogue, is anybody loosening up and has anything else that they would like me to attack with objections that might come from a buyer and signing the agency? Class dismissed.